Hey there, good afternoon. I'm Lucas Bond with the Missouri Department of Conservation. And today on Habitat Hints, we're going to talk about warm season grasses. I mean, we're in a horrible drought right now. And right now we're really, really, I know a lot of farmers and uh, we're looking to cut hay and not having a lot of hay. But hey, you know what? Warm season grasses are growing and they are really, could be a really big help right now. So I actually have MDC's Seth Bier Berrios with, here with me and he's gonna tell us all we need to know about warm season grasses. So let me turn this around and we'll get to talking about warm season grasses. So what you're seeing is a, ton, a lot of warm season grasses here and I'm gonna flip this up to Seth. Seth, tell us the importance of warm season grasses and why they can really help out during a drought like we're having right now. Yeah. So. You know, right now uh, we're we're in a pretty significant drought. Um, you know, last summer uh, we had a significant drought as well. The South, uh, the Ozarks, and the Southwest Missouri were in a very very bad situation with the drought. Uh, here in Central Missouri, we're all again getting into that droughty situation. Um, you know, native warm season grasses are a great opportunity and a great alternate for cattle production uh, as far as the forage goes. You know, typically our cool season grasses have shallower root systems, um, and when it gets really droughty, they tend to uh, go into dormancy and cease production as far as forage goes. However, our native warm season grasses provide exceptional uh, forage quality and quantity. You'll see here this switchgrass stand is growing, and even in the drought, it is still has significant um, height. It's probably right at around that 30 inch to uh, 35 inch mark or so. Um, tonnage wise, uh, you're probably looking at about three tons to the acre, uh, maybe four tons to the acre. Native warm season grasses survive these drought situations by putting very deep root systems in the ground. Some of our natives uh, can, root systems can reach down as far as six feet where that moisture level still is, out competing that of our cool season grasses. So when we get into a, a diversified forage system on landowners' properties, we really want to encourage some of these native warm season grasses to diversify to complement this summer growth uh, when some of our uh, cool season grasses are going dormant. Cattle, if, I, if this was uh, my pasture right now and I was putting cattle in here, this would be a great opportunity to put cattle in. Around that 30 inch mark, put the cattle, stock your cattle, watch the uh, grazing height, and when it gets down to around that uh, 10 inch mark, I would be removing cattle, letting this rest uh, and get that height back up to maybe about uh, 18 to 20 inches, and we can regraze. The, just the important uh, thing here it, with native warm season grasses for forage is to not graze too low and to ensure, ensure that we have at least uh, uh, about 15 inches to 18 inches of growth going into the winter uh, to ensure that those root systems are not impacted later in through the winter. Now, when you're talking warm season grasses, how does a farmer or someone like that grow this? Do they need to go and talk with our local, you know, where they talk to their local MFA or something like that to get information or um, so forth? Yeah, you know, warm season grass is a little bit different than planting cool season grasses. So I would recommend working with your local private land conservationist um, or the local NRCS staff, and they can help you uh, to understand about the site prep, the importance of site prep and, plant, and then planting the native warm season grasses. Typically, uh, we have a lot better results when we're drilling our native warm season grasses, although broadcasting is still a viable option. Um, fertilization is a little bit different than with our cool season grasses, but still can be a very important um, situation. The other thing too is um, with our cool season or native warm season grasses, there is a cost associated with it, and, and it can turn folks away um, when these are costing around $150 an acre to plant, uh, or if not a little bit more if you plant some more diversity in there. But with our cost share systems uh, through MDC or the federal government or the state government, uh, there's options to help lower the cost and alleviate some of that, uh, that uh, strain on your uh, wallet. Now, if I want to learn more about this, where would I go? So the best place to go is go to our website, the mdc.mo.gov. And in the upper right-hand corner, you can uh, select a drop down to who's your local contact. And you can find out in your county who is the local private land conservationist, and they can be able to assist you. All right. Thank you very much, Seth. Appreciate it. And again, I'm going to echo what he said. 
if you're a farmer or just a local landowner wanting to uh, uh, help and get out of this drought to think about for the future, you can always check out the warm season grasses and you can learn all you would like to learn about warm season grasses on our website at mdc.mo.gov. Thank you very much for tuning in today. You all have a great rest of the day.